Hello everyone. In the last few videos, we discussed about plasma membrane, its structure and function. Today, we are going to discuss about membrane potential. What is membrane potential? It is a difference in electric potential or voltage across plasma membrane. This is cell and this is nucleus. We know that in plasma membrane, in addition to phospholipid bilayer, membrane proteins are also present. Some of the membrane proteins are transport proteins. The two transport proteins that are important for the establishment of membrane potential are sodium potassium pump and voltage gated channels. Most important is voltage gated sodium channels and voltage gated potassium channels. In addition to the sodium and potassium ions, there are other ions also that diffuse across the plasma membrane. But the, their contribution to the membrane potential is minimum. So the major ion responsible for the membrane potentials are sodium and potassium ions. This is sodium potassium pump. It hydrolyzes ATP and uses its energy to pump three sodium ions outside the cell and two potassium ions inside the cell. So, there is more positive outside compared to the inside. Hence, inside it is negative and outside it is positive. In this way, the membrane potential is established. In addition to this sodium potassium pump, certain voltage gated channels are also present in the plasma membrane. Relationship between membrane potential and ion concentration is given by Nernst equation where V is equals to RT ZF ln C0 by Ci where V is equals to equilibrium potential in volts. R is equals to gas constant, T is absolute temperature, Z is charge of ions, F is equals to Faraday's constant C0 and Ci are concentration of ions outside and inside. We will discuss about membrane potential by taking the example of nerve cells which is excitable cell. In the resting state, nerve cells has membrane potential that is known as resting potential. In addition to the sodium potassium pump, voltage gated potassium channel is also open. This is known as the potassium leaky channel. 
This allows the flow of potassium along the concentration gradient. Since potassium ion is pumped inside, so the concentration of potassium is more inside compared to the outside. So the leaky channel or the potassium channel allows the flow of potassium outside. This potassium ion is positively charged. So now it is more negative inside and more positive outside. Resting mem membrane potential of the nerve cell is calculated as minus 70 millivolt. So resting membrane potential is generated by sodium potassium pump and voltage gated potassium ion channel which is also known as leaky channel. Now let us see what is action potential. It is also known as nerve impulse. It is electric signal that is produced due to the flow of ions across the plasma membrane. Action potential is the departure from the resting potential. We can understand it by this graph. Here along the y axis millivolt is there and along the x axis time in millisecond is there. First of all, the resting potential is minus 70 volt that is for the nerve cells. Then in the presence of the stimulus, it starts becoming less negative and reaches to certain peak value that is plus 30 millivolt for the nerve cells. This is known as depolarization. Then after reaching to its peak value, it again starts becoming negative, goes beyond the resting potential value, becomes more negative and then restores its resting potential value. So this is repolarization. This is known as hyperpolarization. So how it is possible or how this change in the membrane potential takes place? This happens because of the opening and closing of the voltage gated ion channel. This is plasma membrane inside the cell and outside the cell. This is voltage gated sodium channel and voltage gated potassium channel. In the presence of the stimulus, positive ions start flowing inside because this sodium channel opens. Because of the sodium potassium pump, there is more sodium ion outside the cell compared to the inside. So, due to the opening of this voltage gated sodium channel, sodium ion starts flowing inside the cell that is along the concentration gradient. Potassium channel is closed. So, it becomes positive inside and negative outside. This is depolarization. When it reaches to the peak value, then the sodium channel, voltage gated sodium channel is inhibited. Now this voltage gated sodium channel closes and voltage gated potassium channel opens. Again potassium ion flows along the concentration gradient. Potassium ion is more inside the cell compared to the outside. So it starts flowing from inside to outside. So now it becomes negative inside and positive outside. So it starts becoming more negative. This is known as repolarization. Once it reaches the resting potential value, it goes beyond this that is it becomes more negative and after certain time it restores its resting membrane potential. This is because potassium channel is slower than sodium channel. So it takes little more time to close compared to the sodium channel. When it closes, then it restores its resting membrane potential and it is ready for the another action potential to flow. So here sodium channel is also closed and potassium channel is also closed. It is negative inside and positive outside. This is resting potential. In this way, the impulse is generated in the nerve cells. Action potential or nerve impulse propagates 
through the surface of the membrane of neuron at the speed of 0.5 to 130 meter per second this one action potential of one nerve impulse it lasts for few milliseconds so this is all for the membrane potential in the next video we will discuss about how the information flows from one neuron to the next neuron if you like this video please hit the like button share it and subscribe my channel thank you